Hi, George Sell here from Service Department News at the Service Department Summit Europe 2019 in London. I'm here with Jonathan Humphreys, Chairman of Hocuso, uh, to talk about some trends in the hospitality space and how they're affecting the Service Department sector. So Jonathan, how have you found the event today? What have been the, the main themes? What are people talking about? George, uh, first of all, it's great to be here. And uh, as always, great energy, lots of interaction. Everybody is really trying to find a new way forward for the industry. Uh, there's lots of new concepts being created. There's a great buzz about the opportunities that are available. Uh, so, you know, I think the themes that I'm seeing is all around finding solutions for real estate and how this space can really provide those solutions for owners and developers going forward. Uh, the, the terms co-living and co-working are cropping up quite a bit. H how do you think um, operators in this space can adopt the principles of co-working and co-living and why would they want to be doing it? I, I think uh, the, the key thing is there's some big mega trends happening and part of it is around global mobility. You've got essentially close to 45% of the workforce that is going to be globally mobile within the next few years. In the uh, city I, I live in, 45% uh, of the population is in single occupied dwellings. So almost nearly half. nearly half of the city population is living by themselves. Now, if you think about the human need for community, for interaction, for a sense of connection, then and, and combine with that the fact that people are coming in and out of destinations and locations, then the creation of co-living concepts, as in you can still have your own private space, but you can also have a communal space where you can meet, you can socialize, you feel like you belong from almost day one on arriving in a city and you don't have to worry about all of the infrastructure, all of the support, all the, the bills, everything else, all the headache of being in a location, but from day one you can be, you know, essentially connected and feel part of something bigger. To, to play devil's advocate for a moment, you know, people often talk about service departments as being a home away from home experience. Do you think people are happier on their own? Do you think, I mean, if, if half of the population live on their own, do you think they're going to take advantage of all these communal spaces or, or, or is, that, uh, is that a societal trend that has been forced on them or, have they, or are they choosing to, to spend more time alone? I, I, I think the historically a lot of the uh, concept in this space has been focused really on the room and providing great room product or apartment product and the right kind of amenities and within that. And uh, the, the, the movement now is about creating the space that allows the, the, the guests, uh, whether they're staying for a short or medium or long term, to have an experience not just within the food and beverage and the hospitality or whatever it might be but with each other. And that, 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 is, that is the key thing going forward because that, that experience is what's going to drive the differentiation and it's going to also um, decide whether guests will choose one concept over another. And, and it's not just um, in a corporate space. It's, uh, you know, the, the, one of the big challenges with um, corporates is when they're traveling is around the fact that they're away from home, as you mentioned, but it's also around the feeling of loneliness. And we've done a lot of research into the space. You, you combine stress with loneliness on business travel. It's a huge dissociation factor from their families and friends when they go back. So if we can bring that sense of community back in and re-energize them, and when they finish their travel or time away, they feel better than when they arrived, then you've contributed towards them and their society, right? So I think there's a bigger, there's a bigger play here. Um, I was talking to a, uh, um, an investor earlier uh, who'd been looking at a number of uh, projects and they said that the, um, some of the brands they were looking at working with, the amount of communal space they wanted to put into their developments was, in their opinion, over the top and actually made the projects unviable. Are, are we getting a bit too carried away with this? I, I think that it's about focusing on what really is needed for the target customer. And we worked with a client on the creation of Stay Cook, uh, which is a new micro living concept with a communal space. But the communal space has six or seven different areas. 
And so depending on the development opportunity and that location and the needs of the guest, we can maybe take one or two of those communal aspects. Or if it's in a bigger location and there's more need and we're allowed to do it, we could take five, six, seven of those communal aspects. So I think it's about understanding what the, could the guests want, what is absolutely critical, what's the order of prioritization for that interaction to happen, um, and also having flexibility on the, on the development and, and not being focused on standardization, but around creating essentially a, a bespoke approach to each uh, development project as it comes about. And so looking forward to say three, four, five years, do you think that these, all the, all the co-words, are they going to become an integral part of, uh, you know, almost every hospitality development? I, I think they, they will be. If you fast forward, uh, let's say, uh, a period of time I, I can foresee and we've already started to receive um, inquiries into whether we can create communities for the entire life cycle so you're starting with students that then become young professionals that then have families that then become more mature and then have senior living all within one space all with communal services creating essentially my, uh, villages but with the entire life cycle and infrastructure supported by essentially a hospitality um, aspect. So I, I, I mean, obviously, maybe it's maybe it's an idealistic approach, but there are investors out there that are definitely looking into how to create these communities for the future. Great, thank you, Jonathan. Co-living, co-working, and a real sense of cooperation here at the summit. Thanks for your time. Okay, thanks very much, George. Thank you.